Contrary to popular belief, generative fill isn't just for editing already existing photos. You can use generative fill as an AI image generator. As you can see, I have a completely blank canvas here. On the top left of the Photoshop beta, we're going to click on this square border looking tool. This is called the Marquee Tool. Starting a little bit outside to make sure we grab the entirety of the image, we're just going to hover over it and select the white space. Now, in our prompt window, under Generative Fill, we can choose what we want. And let's just say, Family Camping Trip Photo Realistic, and click on Generate. With all Generative Fills, we have three different options. You can see the variations on the right side here, or a preview image. And then, of course, we have our scrolling bar, one, two, and three, right here. As you can see, this is not the greatest face quality, but one thing that we can do is go to the top left and select what is known as the lasso tool. It's one below the marquee tool. We can actually go in and select these faces. Go ahead and click on generative fill, man's face smiling, and we can change the face itself. Now again, we'll be presented with three options, and these can be quite funny, but you can play around with this until you get exactly what you want. Honestly, that one looks the best, and it looks much better than what we started with. We can also go through and edit many different things, so stick around because we're going to be changing up multiple images in multiple ways, showcasing many different aspects of generative fill. So the first thing we're going to do is make this into an infinite image. This is a way that you can get an infinite zoom out, if you will, using generative fill to fill in all corners. Now you can either import your image or drag and drop into Photoshop beta and we can begin. Go ahead and press C. This is going to bring up the cropping tool and all we're going to do is just extend this image out on both sides. Go ahead and uh, extend it right to about there. I want to make sure that our image is remaining uh, central focus here. Now let's go ahead and click off of that we're going to go ahead and do control A. This is going to select everything. You'll notice this little zigzag border pop up around the outside of the white section. Now we're going to go to the top left and select the marquee tool. Now holding alt, we're then going to completely enclose this inner section. We're leaving a little bit out of this inner box. So now you can see what we have has a subtracted center section and a selected outer section. That means generative fill is only going to recognize the areas that are white. We don't actually need to type anything in to the prompt window. We can just click on generate. Now you can see that learning based on what we gave it as the initial input, it has translated that into an infinitely bigger image. And you'll understand in a moment when I say infinite, it truly is infinite. We of course have different variations. We have more of a park on a bench like setting, uh, maybe on a bridge. And then this one, I'm not too sure what that is. So uh, I like number two, looks like they're kind of all sitting on a park bench. So from here, we're just going to hold control and press minus, and we're gonna do the same exact thing. Go ahead and press C to crop. Let's bring it out a little bit more on all sides. We're going to press up on this select tool, control A to select all, and then we're gonna to go to the marquee tool, holding down alt, we're going to take and say 99% of this inner image and subtract it click on generative fill, leaving the prompt window blank, clicking on generate once more. Now you can see that our image opened up even more, but still staying close to the original prompt that we gave it. Now let's actually go ahead and talk about removal. What we're gonna do is go up to the top left and click on the lasso tool. This is going to be the little circle or loop tool. Let's go ahead and remove one of our subjects. Let's go ahead and remove her leaving just these two on the right. Using our lasso tool, we're just going to go ahead and outline our subject as so. You can stay loose to the image. You do not have to be right on it. As you can see, we're gonna cut a little bit into the table and we're gonna leave a little bit of arm, but we have our subject selected. We're gonna go ahead and click on generative tool. And in the prompt window, we're just gonna say remove. 
and then click on generate. Also when it comes to the removal tool there is one way that we can do this without using the lasso tool. I wanted to show you that as it is a way to do it but if we go to the top menu we can click on select and then we can click on subject. So right now the main focus being her. Once we click on subject, it should just process and then we have her highlighted. We can also remove or edit her using this method as well. Let's go ahead and continue to manipulate this image even further. Let's say we like this campsite, but we want to change these two subjects sitting on or near their bench and completely change the background. Well, we're going to go ahead and control A, make sure we're in our select tool and control A to select the entire image. Then we are going to go to our lasso tool and holding alt, we are just going to roughly outline everything we want to keep. Because remember, when we're holding alt, we are removing something from the generative fill. In this case, we want the generative fill to affect everything around our subjects but not our subjects themselves. We want to keep these two. So we're just gonna do a somewhat loose outline here of everything that we wanna keep, including the bench. We should probably leave his leg and go down there. You'll notice two things. We have a dotted border around the outside and the dotted border that is somewhat protecting our subjects. So we're gonna go ahead and go to generative fill and let's just put them sitting outside of a cafe and let's hit generate. Remember when we do this, the generative fill is only going to be affecting what is between our accepted and rejected areas. Let's go ahead and give it a second and see what it comes out as. Remember it'll give us three variations. Sometimes they're a bit wonky. Uh, so we have variation one, variation 2, and uh, variation 3. So I actually like variation 3, but let's go ahead and just change this bench here. Let's go ahead and make this, uh, this looks like wood furniture somewhat, uh, so let's change this bench to wooden. Using our lasso tool, we're just going to go around the bench itself, going down and up. Uh, and we don't want to include his leg. So just like that, we will have the bench. Let's go ahead and actually do a wooden picnic table and hit enter. All right, and we have our table here. It actually looks quite good. Uh, we have three different options, of course. And if you didn't know, you do have these left to right switchers here, but it will also be on the right side. You can see a mini preview of all three of your variations. Uh, looking through these, like we can go back and look at number two. Number one was definitely worse. Uh, I'm thinking number three is the best. So we're gonna go ahead and keep number three. So yeah, our picture is starting to change quite a lot. Let's go ahead and talk about changing specific items or apparel on someone. We can go ahead and control plus to zoom in a bit and let's go ahead and change his hat. So using the lasso tool yet again, we're gonna go in and not holding alt, just uh, outline this. Like I said, it can be quite loose. If you ever want something bigger, just make your generative fill space even bigger. So if we wanted to say put him in a cowboy hat, we probably would have come all the way out to here. Just depends on what you would like to change. Remember, whenever you're outlining something, you are filling that area with the generative. So it does not have to be just in the constraints of this right here. Let's go ahead and put him in a fedora. And there we have it. Of course, we had three options, two of which were just ball caps. The only one that was relatively close was generative number two. So there you go. Uh, we can go ahead and zoom back out. And for the sake of it, let's go ahead and press C. And let's just crop this in, if it will let me, if I'm on the right tool, let's just crop this in a little bit like so. So we can be working with this smaller space right here. 
For our next few use cases, we're going to be swapping up the image. We went pretty far with the last one, but let's go ahead and start with this. You'll notice that I've loaded a 9 by 16 aspect ratio image onto a 16 by 9 platform or background, whatever you'd like to say. There's white on each side, and I want to expand on this image. I want it to look like I used a wide angle lens to shoot this, or rather I shot in landscape rather than portrait. So we're going to go ahead and load our initial image into the very center. Then we're going to go select our marquee tool, the second tool from the top on the left side. Let's go ahead and start a little bit outside the lines just to make sure we grab all of this white area. And we're going to highlight, let's say about 5% maybe less than 5%, maybe 3 to 5% inside of our original image. Now we're going to click Generative Fill, but all we're going to do is click Generate, leaving our prompt window blank. We're going to do this on the left side, then we're going to do this on the right side, and we'll be right back. Just like that, we now have a wide-angle lens shot. All the color grading is matched, and everything looks like it was one photograph. We even actually had a couple of cool generatives, as I'm stuck on the right side between using number two and using number three. I mean, honestly, the wall, all of this, just flows. That crack that starts on the left generative, continuing through the middle, flows perfectly through the right. But... I just think this is a better image. I don't know. Tell me what you think down below in the comments. Do you like two or three better? That's, that's genuinely something I was struggling with while recording the next section. Okay, anyways, let's continue. This looks like a business professional, but one thing looks missing, and that's a watch. Let's go ahead and add a wristwatch on his left wrist. Now, instead of the marquee tool, we're going to be going one lower to the lasso tool. Go ahead and select the lasso tool, and let's go ahead and give it a little bit of room to work with. Yeah, let's go ahead and go like that, and let's just say wristwatch, and hit enter. Now that we've added a watch, we can change any other feature that we want. Let's go ahead and say we see the sunglasses, but we're not a huge fan of them. So we're going to go ahead and outline like so. And again, this can be loose. It's not going to cut off his nose, but it's going to read what is inside of this section. When we click Generative Fill and click Generate, it's going to go ahead and take what it knows about this section and generate something similar. Let's see if we can get some glasses that aren't sunglasses. All right, now they're still somewhat sunglasses, but they are better. The purpose is I want a generative fill to give me its interpretation of what this guy's eyes would look like. And we have somewhat of an idea right here. Let's go ahead and grab our lasso tool and add some hair. Now remember, when we're generating, we don't want to just select around our subject. We actually want to give it a bit more room to work with. So we're going to go ahead and select that, Generative Fill, and let's just say uh, man's haircut uh, flowing. Let's go ahead and generate that and see what it comes up with. Now we're going to do something really interesting, and this really pushes the limits of this generative AI. To begin, we're going to take our subject and put him into an entirely different scene. Actually, we're going to put him in no scene at all. But instead of selecting all and then using our subject as a negative, we're just going to go to the top, to the little select tool, we're going to click in the center, and then simply click remove background. This is going to use the Photoshop AI to do just that. It's going to quickly remove our background, leaving our subject still in the center. Here we have our subject with no background. We can click on him and move him wherever we would like. Let's go ahead and move him on over to the right side of our screen here. And then let's go ahead and press C to crop and drag this over a bit. What we're going to do now is actually drop a secondary image. We're going to attempt to see how well this can do image splicing. So let me go ahead and drag and drop this on in here. You can see we have a nice mountain 
range. With our mountain range, or image 2 on the left, and our guy on the right, or our image 1, our initial image, we're going to grab our marquee tool. We're actually going to grab everything in here because we want the white background to be a reference of what we see here. Now, when our image is fully generated, we should have him standing with this mountain range as the entire backdrop. So we've used our marquee tool to select everything, but we want to keep our subject in the image. We don't want it to copy this mountain range over him. So I'm sure you can guess what we're gonna do. We're gonna grab our lasso tool, and then holding Alt, we are going to negative out our subject here. Go ahead and go all the way around him. Again, this, this can be loose. It doesn't have to be exact. Go all the way around like so. And then we can click Generative Fill. Now, we wanted to use this as a reference, so we're just going to click on Generate. Here we have our referenced image. One thing to note that if this comes out and your subject is still blocked out, you can go over to the bottom right side and simply grab the layer. In this case, it would be this layer for me that has your subject and drag it further up. The further up something is, well, the further it'll be to the forefront of your image. Now we have our subject, which is still free floating, and we have our mountain range. Does this uh, image give anyone else some, some big tape vibes? Because that's actually what I'm getting from this. So I love the way that this generated from that image. It does look like we took one landscape image and just plopped our guy into it. But let's say we wanted to change something specific like the sky, and we also don't want to go through it with our marquee or our lasso tool. We just want to grab the sky and we want to do it easily. Well, we can go to the top where it says select, and there's a convenient option to select the sky. Of course, we have to have our image selected to begin with. We go select and then sky. Now, this is going to take a second because it's trying to recognize the sky. But as you saw in real time, it really was just a second. We're going to go ahead and click on generative fill. We're going to leave our prompt window blank and then click on generate. I'm going to give this just a moment and see what it comes up with. Of course, we will get three options. You can see number one, number two, and number three. Let's go ahead and choose number two. But something weird happened. As you can see, it added this weird guy in but we can easily take care of that if we ever want to remove anything we just go ahead and grab our lasso tool and let's just outline this uh, interesting looking fellow here click on generative fill leave it blank and click generate it's going to learn from the background that is around it and with that it's going to try and just fill the area with that mountain range that is very interesting. Oh, we got a hot air balloon. We have something else. And we have a floating piece of garlic. You know what? Honestly, I don't mind the hot air balloon all that much. But if we wanted to really remove that, we, we could. We could go in yet again with our lasso tool and take that out. But that's just fine. Let's go ahead and, uh, yeah, let's just position our guy right there. Now, you'll notice one thing when I hovered him. He actually went behind that. Again, we can go to the bottom right and just drag him to the top, and he'll now be, yet again, at the forefront of the image, staring at all of his friends in the hot air balloon. Generative fill, however, is also wonderful for adding things, not just making alternate uh, images for them. Let's go ahead and take our lasso tool and just grab a random area of sky. You know what? I'm not happy with that. Let's go ahead and make it like this. Now let's go ahead and add something extremely weird. Let's add an alien spaceship and click on generate. Here we have our alien spaceship. Of course we will have three different options. Honestly I like the first one the best. And let's get even weirder. Let's take our lasso tool. Actually let's take our marquee tool. Let's draw right here and let's go ahead and say um, ancient Rome castle and hit enter. Ah uh, yes, we now have an extremely believable, realistic photograph of aliens invading a castle while a businessman watches a hot air balloon float off into the distance. 
Honestly, Generative Fill is so much fun to mess around with, and you can do all of this with a free trial. You don't actually have to subscribe to get into Photoshop Beta, which is really cool. 